Some of the people in our past who have shaped Vancouver are not necessarily household names or A-list celebrities. They are some of the amazing ones, the change makers whose actions have made Vancouver a better city. That and the fact Vancouver Magazine is turning 45 years old prompted John Burns, editor-in-chief of Van Mag, to put together an article online and off which honors 45 Vancouverites who have shaped this city. It is my pleasure to welcome John Burns to Studio 4 to tell us more. Well, thanks. It's lovely to be here. Thank you, Pam. Well, nice to meet you. So what's the difference between what the executive editor does and the editor does? Uh, well, the executive editor uh, holds the purse strings and gets mad ah. at the editor for spending money. You the money guy. I was the money guy. So now I get to spend the money. Okay, so <laughs> Gary Stephen Ross is, is the editor. You're the executive editor. Uh, who came up with this idea? People who shaped the city. Well, we were looking, um, we were looking at uh, an anniversary, Van Meg turning 45, and trying to figure out uh, how could we market in a way that would be really interesting mm -hmm. for, for the people of Vancouver. And as much as we wanted to just go look back at our own magazine and say how great we were, we started suspecting maybe the rest of the world didn't care as much as we did. You mean a little navel-gazing? A little navel-gazing, mm -hmm. yeah. So we indulged in a little bit of that within the office. But uh, looking to the magazine and what would be actually interesting, um, I had been wanting to do for a long time a story about people who made the city better as a way to kind of engage people now in trying to make Vancouver a better city. And that got put on hold for a while, and when we were trying to think of something that could celebrate the city, I said, hey, why don't we morph these two together, and we could do 45 people mm -hmm. who've made the city better, uh, or more interesting, or, or broader, or, or just different, who've changed it in some kind of way. 45 pivots through the history of the city, and, and that's what this turned into. Mm -hmm. 45 pivots. Pivots. <laughs> pivots. Pivots. Uh -huh. so, and the categories are politics, obviously. Yeah, uh, the environment. I mean, this is a city of nature, mm -hmm. uh, so there's some environmentalists in it. Um, this is we are on the west coast, uh, so we have a certain reputation to live up to as hippies and kind of hippy dippy types. So of there's, course, uh, there's and some I saw justice. those Greenpeacers yesterday hanging the big banner, right. and that all started here. They're on the list. They're on the list. I mean, um, one of the things I think I have to say off the bat that mm -hmm. these lists are kind of a parlor game. So. Right. First of all, everybody's going to argue about who's on the list and who isn't, and then people get into the nitty-gritty of, well, why this person and not that person, even out of, say, Greenpeace, for example, which had a whole bunch of people from the beginning who were all right. involved as a committee. So I looked in there, and, and I chose a couple of them out of a, out of a whole room full of kind of scruffy-bearded, um, prairie dress-wearing right. 60s hippies. Uh, so I settled on these two, the Stowe's, uh, as kind of like the flag bearers for, mm -hmm. for the beginning of Greenpeace. But absolutely, started here, started in Carisdale. Mm -hmm. I recall. I was... Uh, you were there. Around <laughs> that old... Well, uh, Patrick Moore and some of those sure. rascals, sure. And the late Bob Hunter. Yeah. Old pals of mine. Yeah, yeah. all mm -hmm. contributors to the magazine at one point. Rex Weiler. Yeah, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Who started Van Meg? Uh, so Van Meg started... Um, it was a kind of a, a tourist guide at the very beginning, uh, run by somebody called Dick Greeter. Oh. And I don't know what's happened to Dick Greeter, with a great name like that. Um, but the first editor of it was Mac Perry, who continues to be a contributor to our magazine mm -hmm. and also is the society columnist for the Vancouver Sun. Yes. Uh, so he was the first editor, uh, and the legend goes, the first issue of the magazine, Mac wrote everything. He wrote every story. All the captions, everything mm -hmm. on the cover, every single thing under pseudonyms as a way to make the magazine <laughs> seem a little more robust. A busy guy. Robust. One of the most creative people in this city, by oh, he's, far. He's just a, and yeah. a great photographer. Yeah, yeah. So who knew? Right. Uh, and in fact, I don't think any of his photos were in the first magazine. Uh, you know, he came, mm -hmm. he was a, he was a, a kind of a, a lively, troublemaking um, English eccentric when yes. he got here. Uh, did a bunch of different jobs. Uh, and uh, when he became the editor of Van Mag, uh, in its first incarnation. So he did that one issue on his own and then kind of collapsed uh, from the exhaustion of it and hired Sean Rossiter. Uh, Sean Rossiter mm -hmm. um, became a very important part of Van Meg. Uh, yes, the very much so. And he had his finger on the pulse of this city, Sean yeah. Rossiter. His column, 12th and Canby, which was about kind of the doings of City Hall, mm -hmm. was uh, kind of the must-read column in the city at one point. Sean's still going strong. Um, he's had some health troubles. But um, he's getting a Lifetime Achievement Award in a couple of weeks, which I'm delighted about. Mm. Uh, looking back at that body of work, so the two of them were really kind of, of course, the, the founders. Of course, I remember. Of it. And and Sean yeah. Rossiter also had a great affection for float planes. He sure did. Yeah, float planes and smart women. When I went back through the history, 
God, I hope his wife isn't watching this. Uh, <laughs> when I went back through the, the magazine. I can tell you some stories. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. I was struck by uh, what a supporter of kind of smart women he was. So there's a lot of great profiles um, from back in the day where Sean would kind of like go through all the kind of boring white guys mm. standing around in a corner and he'd find the one attractive woman uh, yes, and celebrate her. A woman her. of substance. Yes. So yeah. to speak. I so doubt that those real housewives would have made uh, the mag, nah, but you he never right know. Past him. You never know. You never know. So into the politics, uh, Gordon Campbell on the list Gordon because, on the list. well, he was the premier. He was a premier. But how did he help shape the city? Well, a couple of ways that you know people. At one point, more recently, you know, he was at nine percent approval ratings at one point, and mm -hmm. people that's created a wall. That and, and the drunk driving have created a wall that people don't really see past. Before he was the premier, back when he was the mayor of Vancouver, he did all kinds of innovative stuff. Mm -hmm. He was involved in the first needle exchange program in the city. He was involved in uh, opening out social housing in the city, insisting 20% of um, big projects needed to be devoted to social housing. He stopped the ban on Sunday shopping. I mean, it's hard to imagine that mm -hmm. it wasn't that long ago that you weren't allowed to shop on a Sunday for religious reasons. Um, he stopped that. Uh, but the big one was city plan, which is a boring kind of bureaucratic thing. Uh, but in 92, until 1992, if you lived in one neighborhood uh, and you wanted a bunch of good stuff from the city, and I lived in another neighborhood and I wanted those things too, you and I would fight each other. And whoever had better connections at City Hall would probably get those services at the expense of the other one. Mm -hmm. And Campbell and the government of the time said, we need to actually all come together and make a better plan as a group so that we can parcel out what, we're, what we have, our resources, in a way that makes sense for the whole city. And then we can make some plans about, you know, we'll keep industry out of downtown and we'll put lots of business into downtown mm -hmm. and we'll start having residential and all that kind of stuff. So he opened up the city plan. He invited people in, 5,000 people. Um, took part in these little planning circles around the city and the cynical would say that you know maybe each individual resident didn't really have that much say but by the time you get 5,000 of them meeting in community centers and mm -hmm. all hashing out you know well, where sure. should land transit go you bet emphasis on community Gordon yeah. Campbell yeah, and uh, I, uh, we won't mention the HST that's an aside yeah. <laughs> but uh, and he was at uh, uh, City Hall with Art Phillips as sure. you know Mayor Art Phillips yep. who was another visionary yeah, who absolutely. Put this so. city together. Yeah. Um, absolutely <clears throat> so. And, and uh, Art Phillips and Carol Taylor were two people that I, I desperately wanted to put on the list, but they've both been on another of our lists, the Power 50 list, mm -hmm. so often that I felt that the magazine had really celebrated them. Gordon Campbell hasn't actually been on our list that often. So. Really? Well, who knew? <laughs> well, I've emceed uh, for a few years the uh, Power 50. Yeah, wonderfully. They're all movers and shakers. And you have some people who have left us, and who could forget Terry Fox? We simply can't. I was. Um, I was so struck reading, going back and rereading all the stuff that I, I remember from when mm -hmm. I was a kid of Terry Fox. I teared up again and again reading this stuff. There is something, I, maybe people in other countries would kind of look at this and say it's not that big a deal, but to a Canadian it just feels like mm -hmm. that monumental, arduous, one foot in front of the other running across half of this country before he was stopped by a second bout of cancer is, I can feel it actually starting now, is, mm -hmm. <laughs> is crazy, I mean it's... I know, well I was uh, uh, hosting a radio show yeah. then, and we check in with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, across the country, and with uh, the, his parents, Betty and Roly, and, yeah. and all of that, amazing times, yeah. and then uh, uh, the um, monument to Terry Fox yeah. caused to stir in this town, the yeah. first one. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Copeland has come back now with, uh, mm -hmm. with what's outside of, of um, BC Place and is, I think it's wonderful. I mean, I like the way this static series of statues now give you a real sense of how awkward and uncomfortable and painful and heroic, mm -hmm. you know, larger it's, than it's life. It's beautiful is. work. It is beautiful work And now. it's unusual work for Doug Copeland yeah. and Douglas Copeland, Mr. Gen X, yeah. brilliant artist, brilliant writer. Yeah. What isn't he brilliant at? Yeah, Throws he's, a great party. He's also on our list. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and he makes a, a really fine white bread grilled cheese sandwich. Uh, he which does. I admire him for. Oh. Very humble. That's in his right. Kind of personal he loves taste. mac and cheese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not a fancy cook. He's a craft dinner guy. He's a craft dinner guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, he's on the list, uh, and uh, you know the stuff he's involved right at the moment. Uh, he and Gregor Robertson have been around the world at the moment. Uh, talking about kind of where the city might go with all kind of Wi-Fi and, and sure. infrastructure stuff. And uh, it seemed, it is weird to find him now getting involved in city mm -hmm. planning. He designed a park for uh, in Toronto and now he's designing lamp posts for yes. Vancouver. It does it's one seem of those weird. brains. Yeah. 
one of those brains. And the reason we don't have a freeway running through Vancouver. Yeah, right. She's on the list. Darlene Merzari. That again is it's one of the a reasons. Tough one. Harcourt didn't yeah. want it either, and some of the councillors of the day. Yeah. And the residents of Strathcona, I mean, again, this was to talk about kind of that city plan notion. Mm -hmm. So before there was a, an infrastructure in place, if a neighborhood really didn't want something, they were a little bit, it was going to be a tough slog at City Hall, uh, which is why uh, Shirley Chan and uh, her mother Mary and all of these people in the uh, kind of Stop the Freeway coalition in Strathcona mm -hmm. had to find some support. Uh, so they found a lawyer, Mike Harcourt, um, who was like a, a kind of legal aid lawyer at the time uh, and Vancouver's first. Uh, and then they found a sympathetic city councillor who started devoting all kinds of time to exactly what she wasn't supposed to be doing, which was interfering with the city's plan to put a freeway through and kind of like the gateway project of its time, open up downtown and allow kind of passage of goods through the lower mainland in an efficient way. And mm -hmm. here's this one councillor who's instead hanging out in Strathcona with a whole bunch of pretty marginal folks, many of them, you know. Yes. Um, and saying, yeah, I think actually we can probably make this work. Mm -hmm. And God, she did. Alternative folks. <laughs> <laughs> alternative you know, folks, yeah. Not on the margins necessarily. Yeah. Well, just from, the time, yeah. from the time. From the time, for sure. From the time sure. they were. Mm -hmm. The special anniversary issue, 1967 to 2012. 45 people who made the city better. We'll come back and talk more about the 45.